Hey guys, Sean and Allison here from Spoken Garden. It's Plant Chat Friday! Woohoo! Yeah. So today we're going to be talking about Paracallus or Cineraria. Yeah, it has a lot of names it actually. Does. The, um, the exact ones we have are Cinetti Magenta Bicolor. Mm -hmm. So they're gorgeous. Yeah. And they unfortunately might be an annual in our climate, but we're so. going to take some steps to see if we can prolong that a little bit. Yeah. So we'll talk to you about that in a little bit here, but let's get to it. Yeah, let's, let's look at these, these guys. Out. They're so pretty. Okay, you guys, here's one of our Paracallus Cinetti Magenta Bicolor. You can see we planted it in this white pot, and it really just, just accentuates its color. We couldn't be happier with this. Oh, look it's gorgeous. These. I know. Aren't wow. these gorgeous? Yep. So you see this Amazing. bicolor in the white and the magenta tips and the magenta center, actually. It's very daisy looking, right? Yep, it's in the daisy family. It is. And it's got this beautiful, just lush green foliage, which helps accentuate it. It's just, we just love this. It's so full. Mm -hmm. We haven't done any maintenance to this yet, you guys, other than a little bit of watering. Um, we've had this plant for about a month. So um, we need to do a little deadheading and we'll show you how we're gonna do that in just a minute. So this Cinetti um, obviously is this magenta bicolor, but it also comes in just a magenta um, solid color flower. It also comes in, let's see, blue, pink, red, and all of those versions have a bicolor option as well. So you can get like just a solid red or you could get the red bicolor, which will have red and white. And there's a white. Oh yeah, there is a white. White would be gorgeous too. Just solid white. What's cool about this plant is it's a pretty early spring bloomer. So some of you might already have seen it or have it in your garden. Um, it can bloom up until or through the spring and maybe into early summer. It just likes cooler temperatures. Yeah, guys, this is a beautiful plant. Um, it's great for containers. It's great for indoors or outdoor containers. And there's a lot of different plants that'll go well with this. You know, a lot of the spring blooming plants, right? Uh, daffodils, tulips, pansies, uh, dianthus. There's a whole bunch of them. And so something you want to consider uh, if you're going to have these plants in your garden, they like sun to partial shade. Um, they like well draining soil, fertile soil, but they need to make sure you need to make sure that it stays wet. It doesn't dry out. You don't want this plant to have dry soil or get dry roots. It's just not good for the plant. It likes a cool, moist environment. Now, these plants are hardy from zones 9A to 12B, but there's some different information out there and some of the zoning, uh, depending on who you read and who you talk to, it's a little bit higher than zone nine. It might be a little bit actual higher up to like zone 13. It just depends on who you talk to. So make sure to uh, research that and see uh, what the nurseries have in your area. Uh, something you also want to consider is paracallus are actually toxic to dogs and animals. So it's not highly toxic, but don't let them eat them. So the great thing about this plant though is, is that a deer don't like this plant. This plant is deer resistant. So if you have a lot of deer uh, in your area or that just come through your property, you don't have to worry about this plant. You might have to worry about other plants, but not this plant. So guys, okay, something else we want to mention to you about the zoning and how hardy this plant is. Um, it likes cooler weather. It actually thrives in cooler weather. It actually loves to be in temperatures even down to about 35 degrees. Now it won't take a hard freeze. Um, so 32 degrees and below, not so great for the plant, but it thrives under cool conditions, moist conditions, and it'll also thrive uh, in temperatures all the way up to about 80 degrees. So there's, there's a temperature range that it just really thrives under. So make sure to keep that in mind when you place this out in your garden, or if you're planning to place it out in your garden. So guys, you can tell that this is a daisy family plant because it literally has a daisy flower. And what makes this a daisy flower is there's two actual types of flowers on what we consider the whole flower. You know, we think, oh, these are just petals and there's the center. And it's like, yes, but really no. These are considered disc flowers all by themselves. And then these out here are called ray flowers because if you think of the sun and its rays that radiate out from the center, they got their name from radiating out. These are actually all individual little flowers themselves. And then there's the flowers in the center. That's such a cool fact. It is. It's fun, it's fun to keep talking about it. That's a fun it's just, fact. It's just like, it's actually made up of more. You just don't know unless you know. So we've got this beautiful pot here. Now we also have another um, Sinetti bicolor over here. Yep. Yep. Unfortunately, we didn't get it at the same nursery. So we actually tried to... They're a little bit smaller. Tried to make it look full by putting two plants in the same pot. Yep, they're a little bit smaller, but they're still beautiful. It's that same magenta. 
Um, there's a slightly different shade on some of the flowers, yeah. and that's pretty cool. It is cool. Look at, I like how these kind of emphasize are a little bit darker magenta, where these are more white. Mm -hmm. Look at that color. And it's, it's fun cool. to see that, that variation in one plant. Um, it's super cool. And so yeah, guys, it, it's fun to think about these plants in this way because these are actually hybrids. This is uh, Paracallus uh, X hybrida, and or just Paracallus hybrida. And you're going to see this variation in color, and um, like Allison was just pointing out, that bright magenta right there, and then the white, and then yeah, there's the that. soft. So there's pretty. that softer magenta, faded magenta, and the bright white. You're going to see that on the same plant. Well, it's a hybrid, and so this happens in hybrids. And We'll get to that in a minute. <laughs> Something that happens too with uh, plants over time is they get renamed. They get reclassified uh, with new botanical names or updated botanical names. The older botanical name um, from our American Horticultural Society book that we have, it's a big encyclopedia type of book. Um, this uh, plant was actually called before Cineraria hybrida. So, but now it's uh, Paracallus hybrida. So it's interesting when these things, when these plants get uh, reclassified and how all that happens. It's a whole system. It's pretty cool. That was cool. So, so knowing all of that now about these plants, we need to show you how to deadhead them because they need to be deadheaded to keep them uh, flowering. And there's a couple ways you can do it. You can do it individually, removing each uh, flower, and you can use either micro snips uh, or you can use um, these hand pruners right here, both from Corona tools, and we'll have links down below for them if you want to look at those. Um, or you can come through, um, some articles out there will tell you just to shear off the, um, all of these flowers when they're done to get a whole new flush of growth all at once. So if that's what you're looking for, it's going to be a little bit different type of um, deadheading than what we're going to talk about today because we don't want to take off the mass of any of the biomass of these plants. We want to keep as many of these green leaves as we can so it has that ability to actually gather more light energy to produce these beautiful flowers. So we're not going to just shear them off. So I'm going to use the micro snips and these are a really cool little tool here. Let me get this uh, sheath off. So you just take it like this. There's just these little scissors but they're really great for this. So what we're going to do is, is to deadhead you need to find a spent bloom. This one's done and so is this one. And so what we're going to do is, is we're going to go back and we're going to see, hey, where is, where are these guys grown from that we could actually get a new flower? Because if we just go back to here, cut it there, and then cut this one off, that's all well and good, but I don't see any new blooms coming up past this guy right here. I don't see anything coming up. So we could do this one too and just cut this flower stem back to its point of attachment. But again, I'm not seeing any buds coming up from this, any new blooms. And I'm, I don't know if I like that. So I'm going to come back here and I'm going to clip this back to there. Yep. I know I just removed right here some leaf tissue and stem tissue, but what we've done is, is we've opened up the canopy in this area for this little new bloom right here with some other blooms right down in there next to it. Oh, See those other that. two? Yeah. Isn't that cool? And there might be even one further down there in the crook of that leaf right there, just to the left of my finger. So we've opened up this area for this new bloom to really shoot up and get in here and fill this nice. in with some nice new uh, colorful blooms. So yeah, so that's what you want to do. So we're just going to continue on here. And if I see any other blooms, like this spent bloom here, if I take this one off here, I'm going to just take that off. I'm going to leave this because this guy's still looking pretty good. So I don't want to do anything with that. This guy right here has been chewed on. That's not fun. That's a bummer. How dare someone come in and chew on this? It's probably the squirrels. So you guys, while Sean kind of gets to work here, I can just watch him go. <laughs> um, we wanted to let you know we're going to, we're really excited because we're actually going to, um, uh, we're going to take cuttings of this later in the, I don't know when. We don't know what time of year. We're going to um, need to do some research on that unless we, Sean knows. We want to do that. In general, you want to take cuttings after they're done flowering and they're starting to really put on some new growth. Um, you can probably take uh, some cuttings off of uh, the plants after they're right, right after they're done flowering because awesome. a lot of this growth, it's still, it's not hardy wood, it's not hard wood or anything, so that should be okay, but we'll look at some of our, um, our literature, some of our books, and make sure that yeah. uh, we research it a little bit more, but I mean, these are hybrids, so we want to continue on these hybrids and uh, make sure that we continue on these beautiful, lovely flowers. Oh, I can't so wait. one way to do that is yeah. to take cuttings. Especially because we're right on the cusp, actually. We're in zone yep. 8B, which some of you know. And this um, plant is zoned down to 9A. So it's 
very possible this is just an annual in our climate. Mm -hmm. We're kind of treating it that way. Yeah. So we're thinking, yeah, we want to see this again next year. Yeah, it's going to be a big test later on this summer yeah. when our temperatures get up to and above 80 degrees. We usually get up to about 90, sometimes 100, depending sometimes, on the year. Yeah. So, but it does get above 80 degrees and these plants don't like conditions above 80 degrees in general. So we're going to see how they do. So that's pretty much it for this week's plant chat, you guys. There are some pest considerations to, to think about, right? Yeah. We haven't seen any yet. Thank no, goodness. thank goodness. Woo, man, we had that aphid scare last yeah, week. You know, the, the, aphid, the aphid scare of last week. Well, aphids, it's, it's, it's the historical. great aphid scare of yes. 2021. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, guys, these paracallus, these cineraria are uh, susceptible to aphids, white flies, thrips, and even powdery mildews. So just keep an eye out for all those. Be uh, vigilant. Uh, consistently look at all your plants uh, every week if you need to to make sure you're on top of these pests. Yeah, yeah guys with all of that uh, make sure to leave your comments and questions down below for us. We love hearing from you guys and make sure to subscribe so you get updates on our latest videos. Yep that's a wrap for today's plant chat. We'll be back tomorrow with our weekly Saturday morning live garden chat. Live. So we've got some fun stuff. We're yeah. going to be talking about how to attract more hummingbirds, hummingbirds. different plants and all kinds of stuff. Yep. So be there at 9 a.m. Yeah 9 a.m pacific standard yep. time. We hope to see you there. Come drop by and say hi and if you missed it please come back, um, leave a comment in the replay and let us know you were there. So till then guys have a great day. Bye everybody. Bye bye.